A warm welcome to Cloudy Bay and our blog on sailcloudybay.com and Instagram and Facebook for the same name. We are Glenn and Wanna. Thank you for joining our adventures, both land and sea, as we very slowly sail around the world. We are marooned in the beautiful place of Cayman. How bad can that be? These are going to be our surroundings for the next few days. Lovely to be back in blue water. In our last video, as the COVID pandemic went global, we sailed from Jamaica, arriving to Grand Cayman just 18 hours before they closed the border. With all surrounding countries doing the same thing, our hopes to visit Cuba and Mexico before the hurricane season were now all up in the air, and we ended up staying two full months in Cayman. The first part of the video covers the initial days when we could still explore the island. Then once we were locked down on board, we detail all the boat projects that kept us busy. This is our first Cayman sunset. Very nice when it is too. We decided it's a lot cooler and more pleasant here in Cayman than it was in Jamaica where it's very hot and humid. Our second day in Cayman, we've been on board all day so far and Glenn kept very busy washing the boat. It's giving Cloudy its well-deserved clean. Getting all the salt off of everything. Seems we're going to be here for a while. We might become Caymanites. Late afternoon activity is cleaning uh, the blue stripe. Time for a polish. For a polish, I've got to get the salt off. Glenn is quite keen to keep it shiny. And there's a lot of salt on it. It's a big investment in this stripe. Third day since we arrived in Cayman. This is the dinghy dock on South Terminal. No cruise liner in Cayman for the next two months. It's all very quiet. Some of the businesses are shut already, some not. Sadly, the museums are shut also. Preventive measures for coronavirus. The shops and the duty-free outlets, they all seem to be empty. During our trip ashore, we found a supermarket, which is to die for. <laughs> and the best finding tiramisu and carrot cake. Mm. Mm. And that's just a small sample of what they had. We're gonna live and die here. Well, maybe in a hundred years. With its borders closed and all the cruise liners now banished. The island was trying to get on top of the few COVID cases that it had, but it was pretty clear that it was soon going to go into lockdown. So we decided we'd better see the island quickly. First of all, we traveled north up the Seven Mile Beach and had a quick look. This beautiful beach, which actually stretched for five and a half miles, was lined with empty hotels. And we were looking forward to having a few days sitting on the beach, but unfortunately that didn't happen. From the beach, we traveled north or along the coast and around the West Bay area where most of the locals live and then ended up in the yacht club at Governor's Creek. Hire car again, while we still have the opportunity before all businesses will probably close soon. Exploring the little island. First stop, of course, checking out the beach. Seven mile beach, which is actually five and a half miles, but they call it seven mile. Very nice. Oh, very nice indeed. I could become quite happy being locked down on this island. Oh my God, it's horrible. I foresee several days here doing nothing on the beach. I can't remember when is the last time we did that. 
What are we going to do? We're marooned in a desert. How can we live here? A whole month? We'll go crazy. I mean, blue water and sand is all we've got. And the supermarket nearby. Which is full. We have goodies. I mean, there's no stress. How are we going to manage without stress? While having a coffee at the yacht club by the marina, we took a good look at Governor's Creek. It was a very quiet little creek with entrance from the east side from North Sound. Bit touch and go whether we could get in there, but we might need to if the weather got bad on the west coast. Governor Harbour, the view from Cayman Island Yacht Club. Checking it out in case we need to come and anchor. We are in Morgan's, which is in the Yacht Club complex. Very nice looking restaurant. And we are stopping for our morning coffee with an outlook on Governor's Harbour. And how is the coffee, Madam Coffee Connoisseur? Oh, lovely. Yes. It's are so you, good to be in civilization. Are you feeling rather civilised here and rather exclusive in this packed restaurant? Absolutely packed out. Don't know how we got tables. This is the things to come, I guess. Beautiful restaurant inside too. Really nicely decorated. Look at these for lights. Spectacular. Love to see them on. From the Yacht Club we travelled south back through the main town of Georgetown and along the south coast. At Bodden we stopped for a while to see the beach and the outlying reef before we went on to the east end. We then stopped for lunch at Compass Point Dive Resort, which still had a few guests, but clearly they were winding down operations. Further on, we visited Collier's Public Beach, and then the Londoner at Moritz Tortuga Resort, which surprisingly still had quite a few guests. A week later they would be completely empty. Along the south coast now, we found the public beach. It's breezy here. Not exactly attractive. See some good diving off that reef. East End Village. Cute little church on the left. It's very different from Georgetown. At Eagle Ray's Bar in East End. Investigating on scuba diving. Managed to find a craft beer, an IPA. At last, civilization indeed. Sampling the local beer. This is the view out. And the view from the beach side. Sort of a beach. It's a popular diving spot here for dive sites along the east coast. On the very East Point, there's the monument of the Seven Sails Wreck. We have a brass propeller there. We have a lead keel here from a sailing boat. Not a lot left of that. Now that's the big brass prop. If you had one of those on the end of our engine, we could make serious speed. I think so. Hmm, don't grip the shaft too much. Okay, well this is what it must be all about. The commemoration of the 200th anniversary of the wreck of the Ten Sails. Oh, Ten Sails, not Seven, I got it wrong. 1794. I guess something floundered on the reef. I bet there's been quite a few things floundered on the reef out there. This is the very east end of Cayman. Colliers Public Beach. With the free range chicken. Free range? I'm gonna get it. <laughs> Beautiful colour water. Not ready for swimming though, with all that um, coral and reed right next to the shore. You ready for a swim in there? Do that weedy bits? You don't like the weedy bits? <laughs> Next one along, Moritz Resort, the Londoner. A bunch of tourists here still. There will be none Sunday onwards. And this is their beach area. 
several water sports going on. From the eastern tip, we traveled along the north coast to Rum Point. Very interesting area, a small peninsula on the eastern side of the North Sound. There was a bioluminescent base surrounded by housing and you could have almost felt that you were in a Florida type setting. We walked along the beaches admiring the amazing houses, most of them empty. We then traveled along to the end of the peninsula to Starfish Point, which has reputedly got lots of starfish, but we actually think there were more tourists there than starfish. Finally, we ended the day with dinner at Cabo Restaurant and Beach Bar, watching the sunset. Very nice area here to visit. The north coast, no reef protecting this section, hence um, all the debris on the beach. Very messy. They don't clean this one. Further along the north coast, at Rum Point, a very interesting place here. It's like a mini Florida. Lots of waterways with resorts and residences. Cable Yacht Club, one of the places here. Looks very nice. Starfish Beach, where reputedly there are lots of starfish in the water. And of course, there are lots of tripper boats coming in. I think there's more people than starfish. What do you think? Poor fish. It's all very nice through here. Rum Point gets my vote. This over here, it's a bioluminescence bay. Probably very nice at night. I feel like I'm in Florida. It feels like it's yeah. Florida. In between the multitude of um, residences and resorts, public access to the beach. Tiny, tiny access. Speaking of properties, how horrible is this? Oh, my heart. But we carry on. Where the poor people go? More awful houses on this side. Fox and the grapes, remember the story? Rather nice. Yeah, wonderful. Could we rent one of these for a couple of nights? Um, I bet it has a bathtub. With our budget, probably half a night. I bet they've got several bathtubs. It just goes on and on and on. I have a very long wish list. Very long. I hope the captain heard that. We are now on the peninsula going into Bioluminescence Bay. The temperature is just cooling off beautifully now. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. It's just that perfect time of day. View over the bay from the other side. These houses here are quite something. Which house would you choose? The second one along, I think. Yeah. I think if we sold Cloudy, we could probably afford that little enclosure over the outside bar. This one here is one of favourite. The little grey number. Nice little pool in the front. Lovely terrace. I have to agree, it's quite nice. For rental info, there you go. Memorise the number. For rental? Yeah. Okay. Rum Point Club is positively closed, probably for the duration of two months, till the next cruise liner will come in. 
back at Kaibo Yaksal. We've returned for dinner, which was yummy. Much quieter now. All venues only allow 50 people any given time. It's two people now. Cloudy Bay crew. We're the last two left. Today we are scrounging Wi-Fi internet, trying to upload videos, bane of our life. The sun is setting, let's hope we've got back to the boat before it rises again. So at the moment it's saying several hours to upload. Lovely evening light immediately after sunset, cloudy sitting there at the end of the jetty. And back in the workshop, the videologists is uploading her videology. How's it going? 92%. 92% uploaded? Yeah. We're almost there. We finally found some good internet. We've been on board for several days, doing nothing much, just keeping busy and trying not to get bored. I'm reading loads of books and Glenn is pottering. Today is the day of body calling the decks. And I have to be seriously bored to do this. Body call will protect the teak. It stops the decks going black. It turns them to a lovely bleach colour. It's just basically a, a wood preservative. But uh, we do it once a year. And it keeps the black off the decks. Just have to wash them first and then wait for a day when hopefully it's not going to rain for a day or two. And they will be lovely and silver again. Yeah. We try not to get bored while in self-isolation on Cloudy Bay. The new toy is out, the sail right. And Captain is um, starting a test project, the easiest in theory, to prepare fender blankets for our Panama Canal crossing. It's gonna be fun doing all this. And it's gonna take up time, which is good. We need to use time. We have lots of it on our hands now. Our good day today is grocery shopping for three boats which are still in quarantine over there. Two French and one British. Captain is very focused. I'm always focused when my tongue's out. <laughs> so I've noticed. Together with everybody else. How is it going? It's going all right. One length is done. It's uh, maybe not the straightest hem in the world, but um, who cares? I won't trust you with my dresses just yet then. No, 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 I don't think so. Unless you want to look like a sack. I was promised a umbrella dress <laughs> after the fender blankets. Well, I'll make you a dress out of this plastic if you want first, as a practice. You seem to be quite confident now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Well, take a compliment. It's stitching, it's sewing, it's there, it's not too many. It's only a fender blanket, luckily. I'll get up to sales soon. Three days of curfew have been instated since yesterday evening. Plenty of time to play with um, the gear we have on board, like the sewing machine. Can't comment, can't comment. I love this machine, it's brilliant. Let's see the end result soon. The helicopter has been flying in the area for the last few minutes. We poked our heads out to see what's going on. They've spotted two people on the beach. Hopefully they are not from the yacht. That would get us all in trouble. As Glenn commented earlier, better cut some fines to pay for the helicopter fuel. Looks like we might have a nice sunset. Maybe it will become pinkish. Could be a green flashlight. What do you think? Disco lights? Certainly going to be red. Two days of curfew. We've been on board. Both fender blankets are finished. You are pretty pleased with yourself, aren't you? I am. I think our sewing's got pretty good. I mean, basically, it was just putting a hem around all four sides. We strengthen the corners like this so they can stretch out. And then for each stanchion, we have a little strip that goes around. And the piece de resistance 
which sets our fender blankets aside from anybody else's is that in the bottom we put little pockets of lead shot to weigh it down with old diving weights so uh, hopefully it won't blow away next windless day we will be trying it out hopefully it won't fall off one project completed yeah, not bad out of a bit of old um, heat shrink plastic eh? during curfew we are not allowed to go ashore we are only allowed to swim around the boat within 15 meters so we gladly take that opportunity to cool off kill time scrubbing the bow thruster and knock the barnacles off the hull End of another day on lockdown. We had the sunshade back up because the wind has died. And another lovely sunset. We seem to get them just night after night these days. The three days curfew finished on Saturday. Today it's Monday. But we still haven't been ashore. Five days since we didn't lower the dinghy in the water. Keeping busy with the projects on board. The new one is going to be the spray top so we've got a bit of wear here and actually this seam is now leaking so to try and save it we are going to put a strip of sunburner down like this one I previously prepared now I'm going to take the spray top off to sew it on how is it going? it's going okay so far a few frustrations, a few swearing but uh, we shall see this is this patch. Just got to get it on nice and straight. End result? I think that's pretty good. Well, I would say perfect, but not bad. That's it, it's up. I think that's pretty good. What do you think? Wonderful. Hopefully you won't get any trips in there anymore. Not to mention it won't fall apart until the next stitching goes. What are you doing here? I think you are going over the top. Well, if you can't bring Muhammad to the mountain, you have to bring the mountain to Muhammad. I'm just fixing these corners here that were previously repaired by me were falling apart again. So uh, why take it all off when you can get the sewing machine here? Not much wind in the next few days. Wind scoot up, over boom, sunshade up. Lovely and cool under here. It creates a wind tunnel effect. And since there is no wind, we are also taking the opportunity to test the fender blanket, which I think came up quite nicely. I'm quite pleased. When do I start on dresses? Well, maybe a couple more projects later. Right. Pleased with your work, Captain. Yeah, for a first project, I think it's pretty good. It's a little bit long in the back, but I think we just have to lift it up a bit. It should be fine. Let's see the other side. Yeah. And the other side. We are ready. But who knows when we get to Panama. We were supposed to be there now, according to plan B. But who knows what happens with this world. After five days, Dingy goes in the water. It's going to show. Our surname starts with S. We are allowed to go to the supermarket today. It's S L to Z. S for supermarket, S for Sansom, we're a go! I've never been so happy to go shopping in all my life. <laughs> so we're the same as the rest of the world now. Queuing up at our social distance for the supermarket, two meters at a time. Slowly but surely. Shouldn't take us too long. We've made it into the supermarket. The shelves are all nice and full. This is our day for shopping. So far, so good. Today's excuse to go ashore is to pick up um, takeaway food from the Thai restaurant. Ooh, Thai. Yummy. 
we are not the only loony ones on the streets. There are some cars and some pedestrians, so we don't feel too bad about being ashore. I would say it's almost worth getting infected for a good tie, wouldn't you say? No. No? No. Okay, fine. We won't have one. We have gloves. <laughs> Restaurants are open for takeaway only. So takeaway it will be. It will be a while till we can dine in. Change of plans. We have found this beautiful garden in this office block. So we are eating in fresh air. Not that we don't have plenty of fresh air on board Cloudy Bay, but change oh. of scene. Change of scene, change of plan. And it is a takeout. We have taken it out somewhere. Just not probably where we're supposed to. It feels so weird to see everything shut and the void of people. It's been quite cloudy today and the sun has just popped out in quite a dramatic way right below the black clouds. Big red ball. After several days of being on board, we've decided for a little bit of a change. We're going to work from home. We've brought office up to the cockpit. Just for a change of scene. Yeah, and we're having our morning coffee under the lovely shade. Video see. editing, replying to comments. And all that stuff which we have to do for no salary. Well, office work. Office work. We've been here three weeks already. Not much action ashore but keeping happily busy on board and same as every household or boat we have a list of jobs saved for when we have plenty of time on our hands well that time is now we certainly have plenty of time so we tackle another sewing project the side panels for the beaming So, no guessing where I am. I'm up the mast. We have a lovely view over Georgetown. And just to try to show you what I'm doing without dropping the camera, these leather pieces used to be around here to protect the Genoa, but they've worn out. So I'm putting new ones on. I cut out the same hexagon by the way, this is on the spreader jumper and I'm just sewing them on here like this now. It's a bit wobbly up here, although the sea is very calm, it's still quite wobbly. And here I am, hanging in my little seat, 80 feet up, well probably about 60 feet up. I'm almost at the top of the mast, but not quite. Probably not the best looking job in the world. But it's pretty good, I think. Better than it was. Not bad, eh? Look at that. What do you think? What a lovely view. Just come inside the cutter. Sun's going down. It's lovely. All the previous sewing projects were a training in preparation of the biggest project sewing the cellar panels on top of the bimini. Six of them, we've wired them in yesterday, tested. They work perfectly. Let the sewing begin. And the big day has arrived, bimini is off. I know why they call them sweatshops now. A lot of material to try to get through this little gap in the sewing machine. Half the bimini. Not easy. The trickiest part is to line up the solar panels. Quite an intricate job and time consuming. So on the edge of the panels we have this rail and we have a rope 
bolt rope goes down them and then we're just covering it with a piece of um, umbrella to keep the UV off. You having a craft uh, class here? Yeah, you thought I was sewing. It's actually origami. I had to make 24 of these wear triangles. I've got quite a little factory going here. Mm -hmm. I've got it all lined up. The process is down to a fine art. I'm going to paint a triangle making. See that? You think it's a bird? Or is it a plane? No, it's a wear triangle. Look at that. I'll start making my own Christmas cards next. Sewing on the Bimini is over. It was a monster job, but finally done. Monster job indeed. So this is one panel will go here, one of six. We have the rope rails covered by a strip of umbrella to keep the sun off the rail. And then we put two little, four little corner patches to take any wear that uh, might happen with the corners rubbing up and down the Bimini. And then finally a strip of material up the middle to hide all the wires in. So now we're going to put it up and see if it works. Four weeks since we've been in Cayman, Easter, Glen's Easter, and we celebrated by installing the solar panels. Wind picked up, hence the overboom sunshade is off. Yes, we are rolling badly. The solar panels are up, just need to redo the wiring. For some reason the wiring didn't work the way it was, so I've got to rewire it a little bit. Not that I connected anything wrong, it's just the two wires together seem to interfere with each other. These are all the solar panels, they're wired in. And I just slide them up on their rails. Like this. One in. Two in. Three. And down the middle, just to keep the sun off the wires, we have this with Velcro. It rolls all the way down and traps the wires. Yeah. Voila. All neatly away. And this is the side panel which kept us shady today. Time to go ashore again. Uh, to renew our visas, which have expired after 30 days. Yeah, we don't believe it either that we've been here for so long, but uh, yeah, going to Customs and Immigration. Visa renewal. Hopefully they won't kick us out. We're British, so they can't. For the port side sunshade, we simply used the starboard side that we'd already finished as a pattern. We then cut out the Pfeiffer text this Pfeiffer text material gives about 50 to 60 percent UV protection. First fitting check. Looks okay. The outside edges of the mesh we used some UV cell protection cloth which we had spare. It was a bit stiff but it gave a good medium for putting grommets through. Here we are sewing the lower edge. and cutting the holes using a special drill bit for putting the grommets in. The Bimini side shade is done, or both of them. So we put these Lox poppers to hold it up, just five of those, a little bit of Velcro. This was some sail material we had for uh, anti-UV on the sails, and this was just a mesh that we bought from Sailrite. And this one we've pinned to the lifeline, and the other one 
we've got it to the jack state, so we can have it either either way. Do you think we have enough canvas over the cockpit? I guess we need one last piece here to cover this corner. In between our project work we had nice cool off swims and enjoyed the coral life below the boat. When we first arrived there were no fish anywhere. But one month with no cruise liner Taurus the fish had returned. And we got to know quite a few regulars. Meet Pablo the Pufferfish and Gary the Grouper. Oh, he's so shy, he just darted between those rocks. To protect the reef from anchors, Cayman had provided lots of mooring boys, which they regularly serviced. This is our mooring, which they provided to us at no cost. Regularly, we rigged a two-line bridle to keep the bow into the swell. Here, the wind is from the port side, but the bow is in the direction of the oncoming swell. Yes, cloud is pitching in the swell, but pitching is so much more comfortable than rolling. With the Bimini side screens completed, we start on the rear sunscreen. With the three-dimensional curves on the Bimini and the cockpit combing, this sunscreen was a whole lot more tricky than the side screens. Here I'm patterning the upper panel onto the sunbrella material. It will end up looking something like this. Having marked out, I now cut the various sections and prepare them to be joined. Perfect. then sewing the forward hem. Here I'm cutting more Pfeiffer text off the roll. And now marking out the upper curved edge. Careful, genius at work. The two are now joined using basting tape, basically a double-sided tape to hold the material together until it's sewn. Then sewing together. First fitting. Hello. How are you on this side, you're netting the... Shady. <laughs> the upper edge is held to the bimini with the locks fasteners and the lower edge is secured to the same fittings that the cockpit tent attaches to. The small triangles you see are to reinforce the mesh around the holes. The final task is to fit binding to the lower edge. This stops the mesh from fraying and also provides a nicely finished edge. Here we have to use a special attachment to the Sailrite machine called a binding feeder. Sailrite, by the way, have amazing instructional videos on their website. This was our first time using a sewing machine and we could not have achieved all these projects without their detailed but simple instruction. Here is their webpage if you're interested. The back sunshade is finished. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it better be good. It rounds very nicely there. It rounds very nicely on the top. And 
and also rounds perfectly on the bottom. Pretty nice, huh? Now, madam, I challenge you to get in. There is my door, but I'm not going in just yet. I'm admiring the masterpiece. Hey, quite pleased with that. Great job. Having a break from sewing, yeah. for a change of scene workshop moves outside, dismantling the pedestal. One but one little button is not working. lovely Halberg Mastic. This is one piece of equipment which hasn't been dismantled previously. Never been in here. Never been in here. Four years. I don't understand why I didn't want to go in now. Having repaired the switch, we also found some wires that needed recrimping. This was a good proactive maintenance catch. Yesterday's project was to repair one of these buttons, which uh, didn't seem to be working on the sale, and to remove all that yucky Halberg Rassi gumph, and now I'm about to seal it all back up again. It's quite nice and clean and neat, isn't it? Glenn started the last sewing project, dinghy cover, prepared the first templates after watching the sale route uh, video. Ours are going to be better than sell right now. I bet it will be. It's uh, the only trick, the only challenge is this, the way this curves here is not so easy, but this part here is not looking too bad. Quite an intricate job, this dinghy cover. Lots of measuring, drawing, cutting, remeasuring, redrawing, and recutting. It's a little bit of an interactive process where you have to do it one bit at a time and then redo it and then re redo it. But we're getting there, bit by bit. Three days of templating the dinghy, making progress. Lots of measuring and drawing and cutting. The thing is, I can only get outside here when it's like cool like this. It's so hot otherwise. Getting the panels to fit around the curve at the front of the tubes was particularly challenging. This art shop is the result of a drawing marathon last evening. And now today we'll be cutting out 48 items to go around all the objects that's the dinghy. 48. Craft shop moved outside. <laughs> how, is, how is it progressing? Good. Got a whole bunch of them here, look. Each one's paired. And this is a big sheet, I'm just the last big sheet to start on. We had a little bit of rain, and after it came the rainbow, the devil one in fact. Lovely. Just using the hot knife to cut it, leaves a nice sealed edge that way. Fitting up the starboard side before we move on to the port side. A bit dangerous in this wind with all the pins in this umbrella. How is it going? It's pretty good. Quite pleased with it. If this uh, tape stuck to it, it would help, but uh, I think it all lines up okay. On the port side now, same template, minor adjustments. I'll sell these templates, what do you think? Templating the rear of the tubes was a pretty tricky job and patterning and putting the material together was not an easy task either. To secure the covering to the dinghy we put a strip of velcro all the way around the outside and we had to do the inside too. Didn't feel too good gluing Velcro onto a brand new dinghy, but it was the best way to secure it down solidly so the wind or the waves didn't pull the cover off as we're going along. After two weeks of hard work, the dinghy cover is finally finished. 
I think it looks pretty good. What does the captain think? I'm happy with it. Very happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. I like the patches on it. It's all come out very well. A lot of work. I'm very pleased with it. There were lots of intricate details to work on. Yeah, and a lot of unstitching and stitching and restitching. But you like doing that. Oh yeah, it was good fun. But it looks perfect. Breakfast time for the fishies. Just put some bread in the water and they're going crazy. No ducks to throw the bread to here, so we have to throw it to the fish. Lovely yellow and black colours. Last swim in the Caymans, probably the last swim of the season. We are leaving today. We've been here 62 days. Didn't see much, didn't visit much, but we felt very safe and that's the most important. I'm just saying goodbye to the fishes. <laughs> They're all my friends now. Are they talking to you? I can hear them, yeah. yeah. They're a bit sad. They're not going to get any more scraps. Farewell, Grand Cayman.